you say, Brother Gunner, you might incidentally notice that I'm in high fashion today. Uh, yes. You know, I got, you know these, these gloves, this, you know, these, I used, I used to have a pair of gloves, I'm not like this, it was a different kind, but it's the same style, you know, the one thumb and the thing like that. And then I had, I've been looking for them for years and I couldn't find it. And then I think it was last year in Grahamstown Festival, it's going on right now, well, it's called the National Arts Festival. Right? We call it the Grahamstown Festival because basically that one festival, they, it sort of fuels Grahamstown for a whole year. You know, those people employed, you know, that, that money lasts them a whole year. Hmm. Anyway, so, so I kind of, it's kind of expensive, this thing was, but it's hmm. worth it. Quality when you get that craft stuff from the crafters, you know, it's quality. So mm -hmm. that's that. And then, and then, of course, my Persian scarf that I wear in the winter time, from you know, from from Persia, from Iran, fine scarf. There. You want to feel it? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it feels good. Hey, hey, that's enough. That's enough. Hey. <laughs> you, know, you know, people get attached to these <laughs> things. You know, and of course, I got my. Got my duster. This is an American duster. I call it a duster because to me it's like riding a horse, you know, the well, I guess walking and then the the the, the, the end there, you know, this part here. It's supposed to sort of dust, you know, make mm -hmm. a dust well, dust mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. So oh, let me take this off then. And of course, now you see, first I got my walking stick. You know, mm -hmm. my, my beat on somebody. Hey! <laughs> Stick like that. But look, got my fine gone rogue top along with my fine gone rogue pimped up, see? The pimped up uh, side there. The, no, no, these shoes, I guess they're American. I don't know what they are. See, I got, I got the bottom there. It's like, it's like she got the green down there, mm -hmm. the green down there. And then it goes to show matches just here like that. Then, oh. Then, you know, my woman does all this stuff, mm. going road creations. She did the bead work thing like that. And of course, I always wear my, my uh, copper thing that I found. I have never seen this thing before. I don't wear that. I'm supposed to do something about arthritis, but I just have a good diet. I don't worry about arthritis. Mm. And of course, the newest going road creation, the cap. I know it, it doesn't really fit me. But I like the cap so much, I don't care. I'll make another cap. I don't care. So one of these days, but I just like, the, you know, what she does. You know, she's very talented. She's like a designer. Well, she is a designer, African designer. Mm -hmm. like, well, she's going to be really famous one of these days, I guess. I don't know. You know, my grandmother used to sew a lot. Maybe not a lot, because I don't remember her making me anything. <laughs> but you know, I should tell you this. I come, of course, got the blue glasses. I don't know where these came from. Cape Town, all of a sudden they just appeared. I've just been wearing them. Everybody wants them, though. Everybody wants these glasses. I don't know. But what I want to tell you is that, see, the thing is, I'm what we call a fashion maven. A fashion maven means, uh, I, 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 oh, wait a second. I got one more piece to look to show you. Ooh, I forgot, left it over there. Hold on a second. Don't go anyplace here. Here, hold, hold, hold. Hold on, walk a stick if you can, if you can manage for just a second. I mean, really, literally a second. Hold on a second. Have one over here like that. Come back here. And psh. remember, this was the bag that was created in the, this guy from Denbaza. And then again, my woman, you know, just repaired a little bit. So I got the little pen thing there. So see, that's my whole fashion thing. I'm just a fashion maven, you see? And then what happens, so put that right down there. I'm more coordinated. I sort of like it. But what I want to tell you, my history of fashion, it's kind of interesting because uh, I've always remembered that, you know, my, my, well, we always coordinated the colors and all the rest of that stuff, so that was one thing. But I look at now, let me show you something. I want to tell you about something. Now, there was a thing, uh, that, uh, that we used to do in, in, in Harlem. It used to happen in Harlem every year. And it would be uh, what stage managers you would, you would, you would, uh, you would, what, what you would do is, um, say for instance, the newest sneaker, uh, it's a cool sneaker, they call them All Stars now, you know, Chuck Taylor All Star sneakers. Back then there was only two kinds of sneakers. There was US Kids and All Stars, so Chuck Taylor All Stars, right? But what would happen is every year 
they would check, they would take these all this variety of Chuck Taylor all stars, right? And put them on this on this corner store on 125th Street. I see the store in my head right now. It's like a floor shine, but anyway, it was a store. And they would have all the new sneakers. We call them sneakers back then, I guess you'll call them tennis shoes or whatever you'll call them. But they're all the Chuck Taylors there. And then the color that the ghetto kids or all them kids or us kids would pick out. That would be the color that they would basically be the, the sneaker for the whole year, be it black, white, whatever it is. And that would be the prototype for the entire year. Kind of interesting that it was formed by the ghetto kids. Their mentality would be informed the fashion of the next year, which was really interesting because when you really looked at reality, a lot of stuff that was happening in the street, they would go all of a sudden, they become like parish fashions. They were informed by the black. Uh, I, you know, I guess, you know, downtrodden, I don't know what we call it, you know, the, the, the ghetto kids would inform the fashion industry. And even to today, you know, a lot of the fashion that comes about, you know, it comes from the street. <laughs> the cat walks down the the highway, it comes from the street. Mm -hmm. So it's me, so it comes from the street, it gets this big price tag, and then we buy it back again, you know, all the big, you know, hip hop stars, whatever, I don't know what they, but interesting enough, now they have their own fashion line. So it's sort of like, you know, kind of justice, I suppose, you know. But I bring all that stuff up, <laughs> just to say, that's the, that's the whole deal. With, with, uh, with, uh, and when I really wanted to come about, it's about this whole thing about stage managing, because I learned this from a stage manager named Frank Giroux. He, he was, uh, he's the father of uh, this guy, another Giroux guy, who was, who was a famous uh, well, a Broadway stage manager who sort of took me under his wing, him and, and uh, Charlie Blackwell, who was a, the first black Broadway stage manager. I was into all these, in, 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 with, in with all these guys and guys. Anyway, so these guys, you know, they, they sort of mentioned me. Ed Cambridge taught me stage management. So I learned a lot from theater, you know, about like theater, about fashion, about, you know, theater, about, you know, stage management. And so I'm grateful for all that. But the long story short, I'm just a fashion maven, and I like it. Anyway, this has been one of those dispatches from the arts director murders. That would be me, T, for the Patterson's taking the train to the bed, letting you know what I only suspect. Mm -hmm.